In this video, we're looking at the 802.11 standard itself. We have here on the screen the 802.11 2012 rollup of the standard. And this rollup basically has aggregated together many different amendments since the revision of 802.11 2007. And so this is going to include uh, many amendments that have happened since that time. And therefore, it aggregates it all together so that we do not have to worry about looking at each individual amendment any longer. Therefore, 802.11.2012 is going to include, for example, everything that was in 802.11.2007, which includes 802.11e, quality of service, 802.11i, security enhancements. Uh, it's going to include the 802.11g amendment which gave us uh, 54 megabits per second in the 2.4 gigahertz phi. It still includes 11B as well and 11A. And then the 2012 rollup, because 802.11n was ratified in 2009, will include also 802.11n information. Now it's also going to include 802.11w, 802.11k, 802.11v, 802.11r, and so forth. So all of these are going to be included. Those that are uh, consistent and maintained are included within the standard. So when we go through this document, you'll see the contributors to the document and so forth. But our primary focus here is what we're looking at, which is wireless LAN analysis. And so we'll talk about that, but I just wanted to bring you here to let you see everything that's included here in the 802.11.2012 revision. So everything that was in there before, which includes, as you can see right here, 802.11e, 802.11i, of course, 802.11g, 802.11b, 802.11a, all of those are part of it. But notice 802.11k, r, y, w, n, p, t, z, v, u, and s all have been incorporated here into this amendment. And so this is what 802.11.2012 includes. So what does it not include? It does not include 802.11ac, 802.11ad, 802.11ae, 802.11aa, etc. Anything after 802.11.2012, it's not going to include those. So if you want that information, you have to start with 802.11.2012 and then look at what the amendment did, 802.11ac, for example. And when you see those two in comparison, you'll know what the way of operation actually is for, for example, 802.11ac. Now again, we're looking at the frame information here. There is an entire clause dedicated to this in 802.11.2012, and that's clause eight, frame formats. And you'll see when you get in here, there are general requirements, and then there's the Mac frame formats. And you'll notice that we have here the general frame format. So here's that general frame format that we have seen already in the presentation. And so you can see the individual fields that we've talked about and what those fields represent. Then you can go into the frame fields section and actually read about all of those individual things we talked about. The protocol version field, the type and subtype fields, and here's a table breaking down all of these for you. So for example, you can see that an association request is subtype 0000, association response is 0001. A probe request is 0100, a probe response is 0101. In the type category of 00, or management. So notice if we go on down, you'll see there's a control type of 01 and then a subtype of 1000. But notice if the type is 00 and the subtype is 1000, it's a beacon frame. If the type is 01 and the subtype is 1000, it's a block ACK request frame. So see, the subtype is linked to the type to define the actual frame we're really talking about. So therefore, an RTS frame in type 01 or control is 1011. But if the type is 00 for management, then in that case, 1011 is an authentication frame. So the type and subtype fields, as we saw, work together. And this table breaks that down for you. By the way, this standard is available for download at the GET802 program at the IEEE website. Here's the breakdown of the 2DS and from DS fields we talked about. So we see 2DS and from DS both equal to 1 is a mesh BSS. 2DS from DS both equal to 0? Well, then we're talking about an independent basic service set. And so 2DS from DS10, the data frame is destined for the distribution system being sent by a station associated with an AP. 2DS0 from DS1, the data frame existing in the distribution system are being sent by the port access entity in an AP, or a group address mesh data frame with mesh control field present using the three address MAC header format. And so basically what we're saying here is this is going to a client from the distribution system. Here's the more fragments field we talked about, the retry field, the pair 
power management field, and so forth. So all of these fields are defined here, uh, including here's the HT control field, and notice the link adaptation control subfield. And here we're looking at the link adaptation control subfield, and notice as I pointed out in this green presentation, that bit zero is reserved, and it can be equal to one or zero, well, it's reserved for future use, right? And so if we take a look at that, then we understand what I was saying, that the HT control field can be of the HT variant or the VHT variant. And if we were to look at 802.11ac as an amendment to this standard, we would then see that this information changes for VHT operations. Here we see the duration ID field, and it tells us how the duration ID field works. Uh, depending on if it's a quality of service station and so forth, what might be utilized in the duration ID field. Then you can see the format of individual frame types broken down by categories. So you can look at your control frames like RTS and CTS, and you can look at your data frames, and you can look at your management frames. So for example, here's the beacon frame format. And when you look at the frame body, remember I said the body is going to contain the specified information that the standard says should be there for, for example, a beacon frame. So as you can see, the beacon frame is going to have several different potential values in it based on this table, table 820. As you can see, lots of information could potentially be in a beacon frame. And this is not all, so we get here to last being vendor specific. Well, the reality is that 802.11ac and 802.11ad add some information to this beacon frame body information. So to get the full picture of what a beacon frame could potentially look like today, you would need to look at 802.11ad and 802.11ac as well. And that's always an important thing to consider. For example, if you're trying to figure out what changes might have been made for 802.11ac, but you've never looked at 802.11ac, 11 AD, which was ratified before it, keep in mind that 802.11 AC does not modify 802.11.2012. It modifies 802.11.2012 as amended. Since AD was ratified before AC, that means that there could be changes made to 802.11.2012 in AD that are also therefore part of AC. And you have to look at both of those in order to understand that. It can get a bit confusing, but that's important to keep in mind when you're considering this. Now you could go through and see the rest of these frames, and I encourage you to download the actual standard from GET802 from the IEEE website. If you do a search at your favorite search engine like Google for GET802, all one word, you'll find where you can download the 802.11 standard, including 802.11.2012, and you can look through this information for yourself, take plenty of time to evaluate it. It doesn't have to be scary just because there are nearly 3,000 pages here. You can understand large portions of it very easily, even without advanced training, and it can be helpful in your analysis process.